Hello, dear digital do friends. As you may know, I am still in a burnout phase of my life, and that is an interesting experience on many levels. One of those experiences I want to share with you here. I did one week ago or so something I n not did a long time. In fact, since my childhood. I mean, I listen to music on earphones almost every day. That's not the new thing or the old new thing. What was new one week ago was I was half sleeping, laying in bed and listen listened to music just for the fun of it. That was something I did when I was a child and then it always had a purpose to study this, to find out that, to to learn about this and so on. There always was a calculation of a kind, that kind of purpose. But to just lay down and just listen to something just for the fun of it, that was kind of new. So I came across on YouTube what I listened to, the album from Genesis called Duke. I came I came to that because mm, not really I l I did not uh, love Genesis music. I liked it, but Tony Banks, the keyboarder, had those interesting synthesizers, and synthesizer uh, stuff was my world for a long time in my life, and especially. Uh, one synthesizer called Arp Quadra um, that was something that interested me a lot. So I wanted to listen in fact to this synthesizer and on Duke I was not sure if it is on it. I guess not. Um, but I was blown away from something that I want to share with you here. So I listened to the whole album and I felt my body was moving in se several places. Um, something I really enjoyed listening to this music and realizing the whole rhythm thing that was going on there was very organic, human, of course played by Phil Collins. I don't know if the other drummer was there, Chester Thompson. Uh, I just cannot say now for a fact. But I instantly recognized, because I listened to it many times in life, uh, Phil Collins' drumming. I always knew he is a fantastic drummer. But then came, and now I come to the point of this video, then came a two-minute phase in maybe the last title of this album, or it was second last, I'm not sure. It's not, uh, cannot see it on in the description. If it is the last, then it is Duke's Tales. And if it is second last, it's uh, Please Don't Ask. And then it would be at the end of Please Don't Ask. There is a two-minute phase played so wildly adventurous from the rhythm point of view. I never heard something like that. Beca uh, before I explain what I mean, my whole life, my upbringing, I mean, I grew up in the 70s and I'm a child of the 80s. And the 80s started with computer programmed music sequences. The 90s completely drum computer and computer. So 
and my music making for at least 15 years was sequences later on computers and all this programmed stuff so this was my world my upbringing and my experience my hmm hmm how I can say milieu my the world I'm living in and then comes this two minute part in this one Genesis album that blew me away completely so what was that there was no sequencer there was no programming that was all handmade and Phil Collins made and what he did was going so widely with his bass drum very fast I'm not even sure if it is humanly possible to play a bass drum that fast very fast maybe Chester Thompson played to it I'm, I'm not sure because it's so fast two bass, bass drum players but if F Phil Collins did it alone that's genius because it was like a real wild heartbeat very fast heartbeat and what he played as I can say a counterpart was a bit more normal cymbal hi-hat figure but completely against this wild rhythm with his bass drum and then his fills somehow off the timing but somehow also it did fit perfectly so he you can say played t three rhythms working against each other but also they hold it together you have to be a masterful player to hold this for such a long time without drifting away in the timing of course that's the technical side but what really shook me up and opened my eyes to humanly produced rhythms was if you are no know, knowing what you are doing and you have the skills to keep it up you can do things that no computer no drum machine no matter how good you program it it's not possible to and and those wild changes mm, that was really an eye-opener to me and because i'm a didgeridoo player as you well know i think and my focus was more on playing it tight making it groovy i like black music and stuff but this two minute phase of phil collins showed me how much more far out you can go and still groove like hell and make a real emotion and a statement and that's wow another thing i want to say in this m video I listened then in the same night to the song Abba Cup, also from the old Genesis. I knew it for many, many years. What I didn't realize in all those years, how wonderfully adventurous, again, Phil Collins uses, or maybe Chester Thompson, I, I'm not sure. I mean, he could be there but I stick now with Phil his bass drum playing at least in the studio I think it it must have been him yes not Chester because there were just three musicians at this time and only playing live with other musicians as far as I know so Phil did things he played a straight rhythm also on the bass drum but changed things quite often 
without being kind of nervous or yeah he was unpredictable but you with in time you if you focus on the bass drum just uh, you knew what he will be doing that was funny and happy and really adventurous re refreshing i want to say also i mean for somebody who now for l at least 20 years 30 years listens to let's say a bass drum that is programmed or in our time now that is cut out even if played by a human and quantized and uh, this recycling program you know uh, where you can make i have to close a window here we can make everything absolutely 100% tight and just where you want it. Putting out every human thing, all the emotion, coincidence. So I want to sum up now what I want to say in this video as a digital do player i know that now from this night on you have the duty and the freedom and, and the joyfulness uh, to play not like a computer or programmed uh, completely tight thing I said that in my video course for download free rhythms. I said it and I showed how to do it. But to listen to Phil Collins' genius two minute phase where he went off the scale and it grooved like hell and it was free like hell and it was joy. And as a didgeridoo player, you have the right instrument to explore this all so my message is don't be a slave to a tight four to four rhythm you miss out the whole thing the whole joy a much bigger joy i said that before and now i know it even <laughs> stronger and better and yes that was very very close to my heart to say that in this video have that joy give it to you see you